mail bag time. I've got all sorts of stuff here. This is a review item, we'll get to that. Stick around. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you've not been here before. And check out the links down below for the items you see which you might be interested in. This is a bunch of resistors. 2 watt, 1%, 0.1 ohms. 2 watt, 1%, 0.22 ohms. I've got these to use as inrush current limiting on some projects of mine which I've already have built. One unit units blew up. I did a mention of it in a video before and didn't mention it in the live stream as well previously where this particular device is a lower to Wi-Fi gateway which I designed and built. One time when I turned it on it blew up the back converter. <laughs> it just melted it and uh, blew up the rest of the circuitry because it just shorted out. Anyway so I'm thinking well I should do something about inrush currents. So I've decided to get some resistors here. I'm going to use these in series after the buck converter powering the project to help reduce inrush currents just to help with that problem. So if you have something which has got a lot of capacitance on it or a lot of heavy circuitry and you worry about surge currents and you stick a series resistor in there, a very small value, and this helps take the edge off it a little bit and helps to reduce the impact on the power supply. So that's why I've got these. I'm probably going to use the 0.22 but if it drops too much I'll be using a 0.1 instead. bunch of brushes. These are meant for cleaning things. These are anti-static brushes apparently. So if you want to clean PCBs up or clean dust off things you got these things. So basically I've already got a couple of brushes which I use which you will see me using numerous times I expect on repairing things and cleaning up flux residue. But I want to get a bunch more because my other lab needs some more brushes. I haven't got anything out there for doing radio work and what I actually wanted to do is to get some and actually cut them down and make them a bit stiffer because what I do find myself doing with my current brush which is quite long like this one and quite soft, I tend to find myself sometimes when I want to scrub it a bit harder. I'm holding the bristles like this and then using a brush like this. So I thought what I might do is actually get one and cut some of the bristles down so I've got a stiffer brush. So as times I do need to scrub it a bit harder, I've got something suitable. Handy things to have, clean dust out of things. You're repairing gear, then you're going to be situations where you want to clean dust out of things, and holding a bunch of the brushes like this is handy. Good for getting down to little crevices. Yeah, anyway, check out the links down below. Oh, this took ages to arrive. So I have a battery powered Dremel picked up years ago actually. It's got a nickel metal hydride battery on it. And it's actually a friend of mine at the time, I haven't heard of him for many years actually. He sent it to me from the US because it was available in the USA, it wasn't available over here. So although it's got a 110 volt charger on it instead of 240 volt like I need over here, doesn't matter. Anyway, I've had that thing for years and it's been flawless. It's still an original battery, it works absolutely fine. Hasn't had a lot of heavy use, but it's been really handy. I actually picked it up years ago when I was wanting to do windscreen repairs. I was repairing my own windscreens, you know, stone chips, stuff like that, because I was a bit tired of getting conned by repair agents saying, oh no, you've got a little stone chip over here, you have to replace our windscreen. Like, no, no. So, oh, we can't repair that, it's too bad. Rubbish. Anyway, a lot of these things I repaired myself. And a Dremel with special bits for drilling into glass it allows you to do that, as well as the special resins and tools you need for doing windscreen repairs which I purchased as well. Because to me it's better to fix it myself than have the hassle of having to get windscreens replaced because I basically have to get a new windscreen every year because of where I live I get a lot of stone chips. Sometimes I can fix them, sometimes I can't because of severity and where the actual chip is, that kind of thing. I'm digressing. So I wanted to get some more collets in my Dremel. And that's what these are. A bunch of different size collets. I've got some bits that don't fit the existing collets which I've got with it. And I wanted to address that. So these are like a range of different bits. Oh. We've got a twofer. Let's see what's in here. I haven't seen this kind of bag before. Black ones. This ram knife has trouble with this particular kind of bag. Right, some more fuses. So I've got a range of them. So these ones are 500 milliamps. These are 240 volt rated, I think they were. Slight. Oh, there you go, 5 amp. It's upside down. 10 amps, 1 amp, and 125 milliamps. So these are good for little projects and things you want to do, or you want to do replacement PCB mount fuse. You can install one of these. They're pretty small, compact, looks like a resistor, and it's a bit easier to handle with some of the other kinds of inline fuses you may find, but handy things to have in stock. You know, you never know, you might need something. You're repairing something, you need to swap one out. I got the idea from doing these from my Datron calibrator, I think it was. When I found a fusible link on there, it'd gone, had to bodge in something. I think it was that was one, might be something else. But, uh, anyway, 
cross section there. Ah, DW8s. Right. Special diodes. Now, I've got a project I need to do with these and I'll show you what that is once I get around to recording it. It's a repair project and it was an unexpected repair. <laughs> I basically made a mistake. I broke something and then I had to repair it. I did a, a work around. It's a TVS diodes. That's right. Transient voltage suppressor diodes. So these cut off at a certain voltage. I believe these were is it 8 volt? I can't remember. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll show you that in due course when I get around to repairing it again properly this time. Don't forget to click like and subscribe, help the channel out, share the videos, that kind of thing. It's in here. Really? Hmm. That's it. I think this is the Wi Fi slash Bluetooth antenna. I did show some other ones before. This one looks a bit simpler. Might be a Bluetooth one. No markings on it apart from just a PCB antenna and a UFL IPEX connector. Yeah. Not that exciting. Let's see what this is. I think I know what this is, but I'm not certain yet. Oh god. It's the. F oh. Oh no. I've opened it wrong. Disaster. I'll try to open from the end, I think I made it even worse. Anyway, let's slot this out. Oh dear. Oh, down everywhere. Dusty everywhere. Right. This is recyclable, good one for that. It's a workshop manual for Toyota Camry and Orion. I don't actually have this car. I likely will be soon. A family member is going overseas and uh, they're selling the car and I'm buying it. I'm going to sell my existing car and replace it with a new one, which is what, well, a newer one. I like to have information at hand, I always like manuals. Grab these while I could, I think it wasn't that expensive, got it locally. Where is this? SPI to LAN Ethernet Converter. So one of the projects I built some time ago is using Wi-Fi and I would actually like to use Ethernet instead. See if it's more reliable. So it's got an Ethernet port and a chip on there of some kind. WizNet chip, which is obviously the Ethernet driver chip. And it's got this pinout on here, which is labelled on the other side, which is upside down. So interrupt. Chip select clock MO GG, which would be grounds. Uh, that's the other side. Oh, that's upside down as well. That's annoying. Uh, G V V N C reset MI. Okay, well, I have to figure out how to use these things. They're quite compact, which is what I like about them. And hopefully, I'll do the job. I mean, if they work, that'd be great. If I can implement these on my existing project. That would be really, really good. Then I could get rid of Wi-Fi and use Ethernet instead, which I'd much rather have a hardwired connection in this particular implementation. Wi-Fi can be problematic. It does lose connection. But the system will use it at events, right? And it will basically do it almost once a day at each event. Sometimes it will do it at a time. It doesn't matter, but it will happen. And it can cause problems and confusion to people using the system. So I want to make it a wired system, or at least try using a wired system, see if that will resolve the problem, because if I use an Ethernet connection and it, the problem goes away, brilliant, I've got a resolution. But there's nothing I've been able to do so far which has actually been able to improve that, using static IPs and DHCP server lease times and things like that, and I cannot pin down exactly what's causing the actual dropouts. I think it's the SP32 itself. I think they are having an issue with Wi-Fi glitching on the actual devices. I'm not certain, though. I could be wrong. Now, in here is... Another one. It's another version. It's a W5500 and it's also got a WizNet chip on it. Is it the same chip? It might be. I don't know what they're saying. Same chip. W5500. So this is basically a bigger version of the same ball, really. Different versions because you never quite know which one's going to work. 
And this one's also got the pinouts on the bottom. There you go, 5 volt and 3.3 volts. Now the challenge for me is my current project has a lot of the pins already used. I don't know if I've got enough spare pins to implement these things. I expect I can. I mean, it's using uh, SPI. It's possible it will work. It's something I have to look into. Watch out for that, mate. Or maybe I'll do a video, maybe I won't. I don't know. Right, last thing. So like I said, this is a review item, which I will be doing a video on as well. So make sure you watch out for that video coming out. It could be just before this one or just after this one. I don't know. We'll see. Depends how my other video scheduling goes. So let's open this thing up and have a look. So I actually approached by this company asking if I was interested. I thought, yeah, why not? Um, it could be interesting. Well, it could be functional. It could be something which is handy for me to use. It's not actually like an electronics item as such. It's a massive box. It's a BenQ e-reading lamp. So I believe it's supposed to have like a high CRI, like 95% um, CRI or something like that, which is good if you're using stuff for general lighting and you want good representation of colours. If you're doing video work like I am, then it's also important. Well, it's coming out of the box, but it's not getting any smaller. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a review on this as well, so I need to preserve all this stuff. Here it is. So there's a big heavy base on there. That is actually a very heavy base. That must weigh, God, that must weigh four kilos. <laughs> That's heavy. That's really heavy. That might, that might be topping over in a hurry. Got a manual. And here's the actual lamp. And there is the light back element there. Nice, so that is actually looking pretty promising. One's a 12 volts. Got a standard DC input jack here. It looks like that's not 2.1mm, that's smaller than that. Not sure what size that is. Then we have a adapter with a plug on it. Is it 1.6mm or 1.8mm or something like that? And it comes with a whole bunch of different uh, country plugs. Here we go. There's one on eight. There's a New Zealand one right there. So, excellent. So that's all good. So yeah, so watch out for the roof of this thing. I'll do some colour tests on it. Well, can't do colour tests. Actually, I'd like to get a colour test stuff. You know, like the actual um, proper colour rendering information. So you can actually look at something and see what the light spectrum comes out of it is. I'd love to get something like that. And that'd be really handy. It would be nice. Make sure you click like and subscribe, which is on my desk underneath here, which you can't see. And I'll catch you later. Thanks for dropping by. Have a chat down below. Bye. Don't click to... Uh, oh. It's supposed to be like a... Um, high rendering index. Um, I've got my like numbers now. Almost called rendering index. What's it called? Forgotten. Anyway, we'll have a look at it. Let's open this up and have a look.